So welcome everybody. Um, tonight we're going to go through another one of our referee series and this one is playing the advantage. It's something I've been really looking forward to. Um, my name is Claire Dowdall and I am the National Development Officer with Ladies Football with the remit of referee education and player welfare. And it's great. I have Brendan Rice on with me this evening. Brendan is one of our national referees. He's refereed senior All-Ireland finals, uh, senior club finals, uh, down finals, you name it, um, he's nearly went through them all. So it's really great to have Brendan and he's actually a qualified LGFA referee tutor and he's delivering a lot of courses for us in ladies football, especially this year with COVID. Um, so it's brilliant to have Brendan's expertise and his insight in tonight. So I don't know if you wanna just say hello there, Brendan. Yes, yeah, just, uh, just to welcome you all and to, to thank Claire for asking me to come along. Um, I'll not say all my uh, answers are the definitive answers. Uh, again, advantage. Yes, advantage is in the rules, but it can also be a part of your opinion of when advantage is good. And, that, and hopefully we're going to try and clear up, you know, you know, good, positive cases and maybe highlight maybe when it could be negative and so on. And it's all about it's not saying it's wrong it's more about trying to enhance your game and uh, particularly with the, the advantage rule and we differences that uh, myself and Claire were chatting about there's a wee differences but if you're jumping between GAA and LGFA as well hopefully we'll maybe clear up the night but I uh, hope you all enjoy it yeah that's all we can ask for so I'm just going to do a bit of an introduction so what are the aims for tonight it's to identify the advantage rule in ladies gilly football um, key ways to communicate and signal the advantage rule, referees' decision making with regards to the advantage, and noting and cards that are missed during the advantage. So they're the four key topic areas that we've broke this evening down to, and we will go through them throughout tonight. So without any further ado, I'm just going to ask you here, what level do you referee at? So this is again just for our own knowledge. Um, if you can put in what rev level you actually referee at. If you just put it into the chat there, we'll pick it up from there. Is it senior, intermediate, junior, or underage? Do you A, B, C, or D? Bit of a mix in, Brandon, but there's a lot of senior. Maybe a lot of senior, a few just underage. Uh, somebody saying junior, I suppose junior is still a, a brand of senior as such. Uh, a few, quite a number doing quite a lot. Junior and underage, yes. Quite a lot of senior. A mixed bag there, Claire. Yeah, there, there is. There. That's good. That's good. Sorry, I've, I've lost the screen there. So if you give us a second. Can you, can you still see it, Brendan? Oh, I can, yeah. Perfect. I've got it back. That's great. Um, so the second one is, and this is a key question as well. What is the advantage rule in LGFA? Is it three seconds, five seconds, or seven seconds? Again, you just throw that into the chat box for us, just to get you thinking early off. So we have a good base of knowledge already, Brendan. Nearly yeah, you have. In. Everybody's there. Everybody's five coming seconds. in with B or five seconds. So it's a, it's a good start to the evening when that happens. And then the second question is, is there a limit on how many times you can play the advantage? So yes or no, is there a limit on how many times you can play the advantage? So a load of Bs. Yes, yeah, good knowledge here. Yep. So no, there's no there's no limit. And hopefully we help you make the right decision regarding advantage as we go on. Um, I've just put this together for you. So we talk about the advantage a lot. And um, I think this was really good. I just took it out of the dictionary. So what is the definition of the advantage? A, con a condition or circumstance that puts one in a favorable or superior position a condition given a greater chance of success. So when we talk about advantage, that's what it should be. It should be a circumstance that puts somebody in a better position. And I think as a referee or an official, if we can keep that in our mindset, I think you'll always go right. 
you know, it's to try and put somebody, you play the advantage for to give somebody the better position or you don't play it and give the free if you think that's a better opportunity. Um, and that's something I'd love us all to keep sort of fresh in our heads this evening. And the big one, let's see if we get any brownie points. If you just put it in, what do you think is the advantage rule in ladies' Gaelic football? Let's see what we tease out of this. Anyone want to have a guess? You're quoting the rule number for me now? Somebody, somebody's <laughs> giving you the rule number. <laughs> yeah, so give me maybe one or two words to do with the advantage rule in LGFA. So clear and obvious advantage. It's a good way to keep play continuing without punishing the attacking team. Letting the game flow. Allow the team with ball uh, to continue in possession. A player's foul but has the opportunity to, to score. See if there's anything else comes in before we kick Not, off. Uh, keep, keep play flowing. Let's play a develop. Good advantage definitely helps with the flow and it certainly helps let play develop. So yeah, a lot of them on the money. Um, but I think to clear it up, I think it wouldn't be an advantage webinar if unless we went through what the full meaning of the advantage is regarding the LGFA. So now uh tell, tell, tell you what you. Nell is if Nell ever fails an LGFA rules test, I'll want to know why. That is a base yeah. rule 420. That's well done. Well done. I'm impressed with that. So I break it down into sort of wee bullet points because it can be quite a long rule. So if a foul occurs, the referee may allow play to continue. If she he considers this to be to the advantage of the offending team for up to five seconds after the foul. So so it's in bolder, so up to five seconds. So it means it doesn't have to go to five seconds, but five seconds is the maximum. Where no advantage occurs, the referee may award a free from where the original foul occurred. So if no advantage, if the referee is allowed advantage to play and within that time frame of the five seconds, it hasn't went anywhere, then it's up to the referee to bring it back to the original free. Should another foul be committed on the offending team within the five seconds, then the free is awarded from the most advantageous position. So if the person you're playing advantage and within that five seconds, they're fouled again, um, you're giving it from the best position. So, so if the best position is the second free, that's where that happens. Should the foul occur inside 13 meter line, apart from penalty kicks, the referee shall award the free from the 13 meter line opposite to where the foul occurred. Disciplinary action, if warranted, may be applied to the offender. If there's any offence, you should be advised. Brennan, will you finish that up? The screen's blocked there for me. Yeah, by, uh, it should be advised by the referee at the next break and play that a foul has been committed. So basically, guys, that if you have played advantage and the foul warranted either a noting or a, a yellow or even, God forbid, a red, that you would go back after the advantage uh, and, and, and deal with that. So, so any disciplinary action that has to be applied should be applied, even though you have played the advantage. So this is what we're going to cover tonight. Hopefully, folks, you, you know, we're going to cover the breaking down of this rule. As I said, it's a long rule. And, and me and Brendan have broken it into sections and we're going to try and cover all aspects of it um, this evening. So please remember, well, as we move through the presentation, and this is important, referees do not need to play advantage at every foul. So they don't have to let the, the free go or the game flow. If it's a foul and it's not going anywhere, blow the whistle and give the first free. Only play advantage if it is clear and benefits the team or players. So the advantage should only be given if it is clear and it benefits that team. It shouldn't just be being played all the time. And I'm going to go into this video. So. I'm going to play all the videos twice because I understand everybody's interconnection is slightly different. Um, so hopefully everybody gets a read of it. And I want you to look at this video and I want you to comment then in the chat um, 
as the referee, what would you have done? Would you allow play to continue? Would you stop? Or what would you do in these situations? So here's the first video. And I'll play it again. Okay, so what do we notice? What do we see? What's our comments? So, Brandon, there's a few things coming yeah, in here. Yeah, a few comments in. We have a, a blue for the first free with a player going away from goal. Played advantage. Somebody feels there was a second foul and he blew the whistle. Uh, somebody said they were allowed to, uh, to play on. Give the free instead of advantage. She had, uh, there was no flow to the game. Uh, correct to pull it back. No clear scoring advantage uh, going into a dead end. Looks reasonable. Allowed the player the chance to progress, but she was running towards the sideline. People, it, it, it's a it's a mixed bag. Some people saying should have given the free. Some saying yes, play advantage, but it was correctly brought back. And a few hours just saying that there was no clear advantage. So, so what do we think about this video, Brandon? Uh, well, <clears throat> there's a couple of great points made there by people. The one I know somebody thought it was there was two people maybe thought it was a second foul. Um, there may have been a second foul, but the referee didn't definitely wasn't blowing it for second foul because the ball was brought back. Um, me personally, when you're looking at it, it's great maybe looking at it with a hindsight. Uh, I would be and I used to be an awful copper for this. I would have played advantage there when Vantage first came in. I probably would have played advantage. In fact, I would have played advantage in nearly every free. I, until it was brought to my attention and I, I had to bring myself back and stop doing it. To me, where that ball is and how the player was moving, um, to me, there was no advantage really there. The, the, the ball's in the middle of the field. It was, uh, there was a few players around. Yes, I have to admit, the referee gave her, gave her a chance and correctly blew it back. I think what happens sometimes with players is, and this was, a, this was an example of an advantage brought back correctly because what some referees sort of do is they count to five seconds if the player still has the ball they'll say advantage over and they will allow the player to go on but as we can see in this video there was no advantage at all she was actually moving and moving towards the sideline so um, in that situation the referee correctly brought it back to the free but I would be saying, even there, looking at that, and I suppose hindsight's great because we, we, we can watch the video and we'll watch it twice. I would be questioning, was there really an advantage to start with there? Yeah. You know, was there really an advantage? And, you know, and again, in these situations, and it was put up on our on our slide, I think two slides ago, we don't have to play an advantage for every foul. And I know it's great, and somebody has mentioned about keeping the game flowing and, you know, keeping the game moving, but there's times when, when it's a foul, it's a foul. Blow the whistle and, and, and let the team take the free. Yeah, so I think what, what was excellent is he, he obviously thought there was an advantage going to be played. The referee, as you can see really clearly, which I, I really liked, was the signal in the arm was straight up. The player then was taken to the sideline and it was quite clear that there was no advantage going to deliver. The whistle was blown and it was brought back to the original free. Um, and it's important that we remember that we can do that and we're not afraid to do that. So it was a good video to illustrate that element yeah. of it. Um, I'm going to show you another one here. It's, it's, it's the same again. Have a look and see what you think. Brilliant kick out to her St. Bridget's teammate, Noel Healy. And Noel is speeding now towards goal and she looks for a little bit of support, but she is fouled. But what a kick out by Kira Trant. Cleared all of the players and straight to her club teammate. She, she took out the whole defensive role there and just overlapped them all, so she did. I'm going to play it again because I know it glitched my side. 
to her St. Bridget's teammate Noelle Healy. And Noelle is speeding now towards goal and she looks for a little bit of support, but she is fouled. But what a kick out by Kira Tant. Cleared all of the players and straight to her club teammate. She took out the whole defensive role there and just overlapped them so also she did. What did we think? Was the right call made? Would you have brought it back? Would you have played on? Um, what's your thoughts on this one? Right call coming through, no clear advantage. Yeah, a lot of right call. A right lot of right call, right decision. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't see a foul at all. Yeah, very good, Larry. <laughs> Uh, the ball was turned over after the foul, correct. Foul committed a loud advantage and gave the free right call. Um, I, I suppose, I think the difference here between the two videos, guys, is the position on the field. You know, as a referee, you can see that Dublin are absolutely, there is an attack on. and uh, There's a, a chance of maybe, there, there could be a chance of a goal coming on here. Um Dublin are absolutely the players in full steam. Has been fouled. Uh, maybe looking closely, and I think, Larry, you may even have, have spotted, there may even have been an overcarry, maybe so, about the Dublin player. But in, in, even in that case, you would bring the ball back for that first foul. And when the ball didn't get to a Dublin player anyway, uh, the advantage was definitely over, and it was the correct decision. But I think the main thing here is that uh, the position on the pitch, I think the two videos show clearly when th th there's a bigger chance of an advantage there is maybe what I'm trying to say because of the position. The only other thing I would say too is with the girls, the girls today, and I, and I just go around, I, you know, I think of Sinead Hearn, I think of Ola Finn, Jerry McLachlan, Tracy Leonard, Ashley Maloney, where that original free is, uh, that's bread and butter to them girls. Like anything 30 metres out in front of goal, it's, it's, it, with these girls now, it's a point. It's 99% them girls are putting over the bar. So again, depending on the type of game you're in the middle of, maybe teams want their free takers on and, and scoring. So they do. So, you know, there, you have a couple of wee things to think about in, in them kind of situations, particularly when it's close to goal. And if you can even see even for the past, there was quite a number of players back. Waterford in that game had maybe packed their defence. So whether there was going to be a clear advantage or not, but I think the right decision was right. He's, he's got it and he's brought it back for the free kick. But uh, yeah. most people here have said that it was the right call. Yeah, and that takes us on to our next sort of subsection, which is timing. So if a foul occurs, the referee may allow play to continue if he she considers this to be the advantage of the offending team for up to five seconds. So we said that they're, they're trying to referee in both these circumstances, probably especially the second one, we're using the five seconds to see if that opens up for the attacking team. But the referee, if it breaks down, must bring it back to the original free anytime. So if they are stopping it, it comes back to the original free. You know, it, do, it doesn't move forward that if you stop it on the fourth second, it's where she was standing. You know, it must come back to where she was originally fouled, unless she was fouled again twice. So if she was fouled during that five seconds, um, you can give the free from where the second foul took place. Um, when advantage is being played, no one went to take it back. This is a really important, and this happens with experience, I believe anyway. If the ball is played into a corner and possession is retained, it's not an advantage. So sometimes you can see that happen where it starts in the middle. And as Brendan said, just said it's 30 metres out and she's fouled. If you were to give the free there, more than likely she's going to put it over the bar, but you've let advantage develop and it's moved into the corner or a sideline. And just because the team retains possession, we tend to let the game go. But that isn't creating the advantage. So it's making sure that even though a team, re team retains the, the possession, it doesn't mean it's actually an advantage. Uh, that, that would have been something yeah. Claire, I'd have been guilty of, so it would have. Um, yeah. Just seeing that, oh, they've got the ball, play on. You know, you, you sort of had that in your head. Uh, again, it's about 
where you are in the pitch, where the ball is, and so on. And it's just getting into that habit of just t- taking your time. I've played advantage. Is it advantageous? You're, you know, that, that that's the whole crux of it. And as I've said, 30 metres for them girls is a point. And we now have in the game a 2.45. I can bet your bottom dollar. There are, every county has a girl practising kicks off the ground for 45. So anything then inside could be well within their range for, for points. Yeah, and another one on the time, and which is a really miss sort of, some people think it's just a miscommunication of it. There is no double advantage. So EG, you can't play a five second advantage and then she's fouled on the fourth second and start again from one to create a 10 second advantage. There is no double advantage. Um, if she's fouled again on the fourth or fifth, then as I said, you're blowing the whistle and giving it from the second free. Um, there is no double advantage of all oh, played advantage and she was fouled as well, played advantage again. Um, there isn't a 10 second advantage. It's one advantage of, of five seconds. Obviously you can give it a couple of minutes later, but you can't give it back to back. I suppose that, that's the, you know, if I was carrying the ball and I'm fouled and then fouled again, I can't keep my hand up there until I run the whole length of the pitch. Uh, there's one five second advantage. So that's that's one of them. Sometimes we get a bit confused on. So we're going to go for another video here again. Um, apologies, I think this one's a wee bit more grainier. So if you just really watch it really carefully, uh, this Mayo first is true. Once more, it's going to be Mayo's turn to turn defence into attack. Roisin Durkin getting plenty of scope to come forward. So what's Once more, it's going to be Mayo's turn to turn defence into attack. Roisin Durkin. Getting plenty of scope to come forward. We have bring it back. Didn't it seem to be five seconds played? Yeah, five seconds wasn't given for the advantage. Larry says no advantage. No real advantage. Held up in the middle of the field. Should have brought it back. Maybe even the question should be, you know, was there a clear advantage? I think maybe it's even the, the question we should be asking ourselves. Yeah, they're, they're, as soon as the Mayo lady stopped moving, the advantage was of no use to Mayo. Yep. Yeah. So we're looking at how clear it is. And the other thing um, I'll actually ask you is just to watch again. You know, the, did the Mayo player, and this is another question, did the Mayo is going to be Mayo's turn off? to turn defence into attack. Roisin Durkin getting plenty of scope to come forward. That's another thing you're looking out yeah. for again. And then what impact does that have in regard to our advantage rule? And that, that's one I'm going to ask you now. If she did overcarry the ball, what impact does that have on, on that scenario? I just see Rory in there with a good point. Don't think he gave a free for the advantage and it was an overcarried free the other way. Go back to the original free. Go back to the original free we're having coming in. If in the five seconds, go back to the free. That's a good yeah. point from John. Yes, John Devlin, very good. So this brings us to this element of it. And a lot of it you've teased out there for us anyway. Player being fouled. If the player given the advantage is fouled again in the five seconds, the referee gives from the second foul or the most advantageous position. If the player given the advantage commits a technical or non-technical foul, they don't lose their advantage. So if they commit during their advantage, if they commit a technical or a non-technical foul, they don't lose their advantage. However, the referee should stop play and bring the free back to the original position. So, for instance, if I overcarry and I'm being given the advantage, the referee should stop the play immediately and bring it back to the original free. They shouldn't let me continue to foul the ball. 
If the player that has been given the advantage commits a yellow or red card offence, so if they commit a yellow or red card offence, the referee stops play, okay, cards the player and throws the ball off. So that's just having a wee look at them elements of it. So if it's a technical or a non-technical, they don't lose the advantage, but they must blow the whistle and bring it back to the original free. If the player that has been given the advantage commits a yellow or red card offence, the referee stops play, cards the player, and throws the ball off. So, Brendan, I'm going to let you take over in this yeah. element of communication. Just and, and just on that there, Claire, before we just read, major, major difference between the two codes. That's a major difference between putting on your LGFA jersey and jumping the GA jersey and coming back. So you need to be very aware of when you change codes of that advantage rule. Because when you foul in the GAA in your advantage, the foul is being given against you. So it is, so it's it's important to know that. Uh, and 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 by mistake, referees have been caught out in that. Yeah, ahead, we'll Claire. The, yeah. The communication so, element there? Communication uh, and uh, again, communication is vital. It's, it's vital in our in, in any part of our refereeing, but, but particularly when we're talking about advantage, and it's the act of expressing ideas, information, knowledge, thoughts, and feelings, as well as understanding what is expressed by others. Communication process involves both sending and receiving messages, and can take many forms. And we have so many ways we can communicate with players. You know, we 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 have our whistle, we have our signals. We have communication, and as they, there they are, our verbal and non-verbal communication. And just as a question, if you want to just stick in the answer, as a referee, what do you use more? So when you're out there, what do you feel you use more, verbal or non-verbal? So uh, is it more talking or is it more your signals? So a lot of verbal coming in. A lot of verbal coming in. Both. Non-verbal. One non-verbal, but a lot of referees there. Somebody's actually saying they would use both quite the same, but it, it's mostly coming back verbal. So we're getting from that. We're talking right, to our players. One. Somebody saying verbal in one instant to, to the players and non-verbal for supporters. It's a great <laughs> point, good. Larry. Leo, I've learned to use both as the sideline often can hear. So again, the importance of both. Yeah, signals, and there's a good one. There's somebody that signals, but also likes to remain by explaining and using verbal communication. So um, it probably is mostly verbal there from, from the, the, the cohort we have. So we, we probably have a lot of, not, not that we talk all the time, but we do a lot of explaining. Um, I probably, I'm clear, but I'm more verbal, so I am when I'm, when I'm refereeing a game. And if anybody's ever worked with me, and I've ever been on, if I'm refereeing on an open mic, it's particularly if I'm on an open mic, there's, there's ones with me here, take the earpiece out because they're sitting on that man there and never stops. I, I don't know why it's the teacher in me, but I would be chatting and talking and just the whole way through the game. It's maybe just my style, but yeah, um, I'd I be a more verbal. Hand in hand, Brendan. You know, they definitely go hand in hand, the verbal and the non-verbal. I think somebody summed it up there really well when they say, a lot of the non-verbal is for the TVs, for the supporters, for the coaches. Yes, correct. Yeah, and it's really important. You know, it, it cuts out sort of frustration from that element. People know exactly what call you're making because of your actions. So it's really important. And then the verbal, um, I just see Marion made a really good point there. The verbal is because you're trying to explain and you're trying to communicate and, and maybe share knowledge of the rules. So yeah. they're, they're definitely very important. And I think the verbal as well, the verbal there as well helps with um, a preventative of conflict where a question you and if you're explaining before she comes at you, it, it does stop that conflict happening. So there's just a, a, a breakdown of our, our communication. Verbal is all about the language, both written and spoken, and, uh, and how we, and in particular how we use our words is very important and, and our demeanor and how we express ourselves. Uh, and it should be clear easy to understand. I think the word precise, clear and concise, precise, that uh, short, quick statements 
and, and moving on with the game. Your non-verbal, your body language, as well as your signals, your body language is very important, where we can use gestures as in, are we waving the finger? Are we point to let people know that you've maybe saw something? Just a wee point, or even that we look just to say, I've saw that, you know, those wee simple things that uh, players can react to and know that uh, you've saw something and they, they get, oh God, I better watch myself. They saw me do something. Those wee things are, are, are excellent. So just with our own, with advantage, uh, our non-verbal, we'll stay up for five seconds. Uh, we can't turn around and call advantage by putting the hand up. Call advantage, and then as you're running, you take your hand down and move. Because as people have mentioned there, uh, the signals are telling everybody that you're playing advantage. As soon as your hand comes down, the people that are watching are being told that the advantage is over. So you must remember, hand in the air for five seconds. Your hand comes down to show advantage is over, so it must remain there for the five. Uh, make clear, now, this is me, this is a personal thing. Uh, I count. I count it out. So when I'm moving, if anybody's working with me, you'd hear me roaring, shouting it out. Advantage, five, four, three. I would count down, two, one, advantage over. And that's when my hand comes down. So I know once I've hit one and I'm saying advantage over, my hand's coming down and the players around can tell whether it's playing on or not. And I think... Yeah, Frank, you may talk through this clip then since you're talking yeah. about yourself there. So there's a free here. My arm's up. Now, I know we can't hear... As soon as I had counted down, so that's me moving along with the play, I've kept my arm in the air and I know as a fact I'm counting that down five, four, three, two, one. And as soon as I get advantage over, that's it. And as you can see, maybe she's made that run. She's got the ball moved 40, 50 meters there and hand down. As I'm counting, I'm keeping an eye to particularly on what's happening, that if she had been slowed down or stopped, I'd have definitely, uh, it's like an Alan Shearer celebration. Very good, Leo. Uh, I would have taken her all the way back. So I would have. And I mean, you may think players would get frustrated with that, maybe having gained 30 metres of that. They're not. Would you believe? If a player is stopped or slowed down, they are more than happy to go back for free kicks. Absolutely. Don't think, God, I've got the four. She's made 30 metres, but she's running into the corner. Blow that whistle take them back because you're still within that five seconds to bring back to the original foul and don't feel that because you've gone over three or four that you have to finish the advantage so yeah. you don't you don't have to finish an advantage if there is no advantage come all the way back and we have another good one here folks for you it's just a, another good example of somebody playing the advantage <laughs> Three, two, one. Back here, lads. She push her, she's going down for the ball. Mind that six, okay? So you can see really clear here that um, the ref's using the, his communication verbally for his advantage. I don't know about you, Brendan. He seems to use five, four, Three, two, one, and I really hadn't heard that before until I went looking for this. Most of the refs I would talk to use one, two, three, four, five. So, what do you use? Just I, I, I'm five down. I'm advantage five, yeah. four, three. Yeah, I'm the same there. Uh, that's 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 an excellent clip, guys. If there's ever, and even if you can see, and I know in my when I started, that girl was running in. She was on between two and one. She's still going towards goal. She sort of toe tapped the ball, a, a bit of miscontrol. But as much as she's running towards the goal, that defender had her well covered. It was still within the advantage, and the referee was absolutely brilliant taking that back. Because as I'd say, if you continued on after 
the five seconds. Yeah, I'll just play it again. And here, she but... was di- and she was dispossessed. That that whole you know that whole advantage is totally gone. Four, three, two, one. Back here, lads. You know she's well covered. There's two defenders she's covering her. For the ball. I mean, like as much as she's travelling towards goal, Nine guys. Seconds, okay. That, that that call is like that should be played to every replay. That was an excellent, excellent call of high advantage. Can has a chance of working for you, and when you see it's not working, and look at the difference of position. She was coming in on the thirteen meter line, but she was covered by two players. There was no chance. Bring it back. Uh, yellows have a chance of setting up an attack or, or having to go for a score. So yeah. uh, th- th- that's an excellent, excellent example. So we're going to just move on to another area. Referee decisions you make with regards to the advantage. So what's the referee thinking during the advantage and um, making that decision? Because knowing that you only have that that then split couple of se- seconds to make that decision, do I play on? Do I bring it back? You know, what circumstances? What am I thinking about as a referee when I'm trying to play the advantage? So hopefully this section covers this. So again, we want your opinion um, of the video. So we're going to play the video, you know, should should we have let it develop? Should we have not have let it develop? Should we have called it free? Whatever you think, say say what you see. Suppose it's a wee bit like catchphrase. So just type what you see. I'll play it again. We have a, a good call, right call. So yeah, there was definitely a foul. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Should have let it continue for the five seconds. That's from Connor. Could have let it go. Should have played advantage, it didn't let it, yeah. Somebody's saying it was maybe too blocked in front of her. It's a, it's a, it's a mixed bag there, Claire. So there's some saying, could have let it go, some saying. I have to admit, when there's a free, there's a free. The referee is, is correct to blow a free kick. Um, maybe just even just to play it again. I think if you yep. watch number six, number six passed it and then made another run. There could have been a chance. She's yep. just played it and now she's making a run. Yeah. Uh, could have been a chance um, but that, that's one of those but can you fault the referee for not playing advantage no absolutely not because as we all agree here it is a free you know again it's a it's it's an individual thing when you're on the field you know you have that call to make and um, maybe this was a, an area where he he may I think it's a he may have uh, allowed an advantage but there's certainly no complaint there for the free kick and and uh, the the Wicklow maybe I think it is getting her free, but uh, again, it's just on that situation for yourself, whether yeah. you feel happy enough to let it go or to blow the free. Yeah, so definitely there, there could have possibly been an advantage played with the player coming off the shoulder, and maybe the ref just didn't see that developing, or the angle we don't see from the video is, did the ref look up ahead and see there's absolutely yeah. nothing on. Um, I'm not playing advantage because we all agreed it was a foul. So it's one of them. That was Marion. That was a good point. That was from Marion there. Very good. Wall. Wall at Shawile. Shawin Vicky Wall. Vicky Wall. How she did it with Shakar Void. Lauren McCormick. Vicky Wall. Vicky Wall. Isha. Got it. I. I. I let you watch this again. What, what can I say? Uh, I I would be very friendly with this uh, referee. He'd be a, a very good friend of mine. 
Uh, let me tell you, oh, I don't even want to blow him up any bigger than he is. Guys, I would have to say that's one of the best advantages that, that came about in the, the 2020 season. So it was um, with the, the, that initial foul. And if he hadn't blew the free because of the actual, there was two players there. I don't think anybody would have complained at the time. But the fact that that just, he gave it a chance and it, it because she was so direct and opened up, and I suppose maybe even knowing who the player was, maybe led to uh, maybe another player, and I'm not saying that any other player might have done the same, but maybe who the player was, knowing your audience, allowed that advantage to happen and the rest is history. It's, it's one of the ones that you couldn't have planned the advantage to work that way yeah. if you tried as a referee. But I think if we break it down, Brendan, and the reasoning behind, he probably allowed that advantage because of the positioning on the pitch. And that's what yeah. I sort of want to get across. If that had it been the same foul committed in the half back line, would they have allowed the advantage? Probably not. But if you're looking at it, it was very central where she was fouled. And it, there was a good bit of space in front of her with Cook Park being yeah. obviously a great opportunity for pitch to play it. And um, he gave it a go and played the advantage. And, and because of it, we got one of the goals of the year one of the goals of the season from it. Um, yeah. So it all worked out. Tell, if anybody knows Seamus, don't let him know that it was a great advantage. Just don't, don't let him know. Oh, wait, this one? Because the players was put off, I think, in the last 10 minutes for sending for three fouls or kicked three times and uh, had a big, big bearing on the game. And Paul came back and won it. And uh, they looked like they were going to do it. And that's a great effort by Katie Heron from distance. It goes wide, but the referee calls it back to Another foul, and as you say, is that the I played again. Well, the Galway players was put off, I think, in the last 10 minutes for sending for the three fouls or ticked three times and uh, had a big, big bearing on the game. And Cork came back and won it when Galway looked like they were going to do it. And that's a great effort by Katie Heron from distance. It goes wide, but the referee calls it back for another foul. And as you say, is that. Correct call, good advantage played, right call. I'm liking these answers, Clear, sorry, I am. Just inside the five seconds. Oh, I like this now. I have to admit, I'm going to come with Connor on that, just inside the five seconds. Uh, I'm glad somebody pointed that out, actually. Yeah. Uh, just on that, Connor, the fact that I know about it, it's, it's, it's actually me in the video clip. Yeah. Uh, if you watch the video clip, I've I've called the advantage. My arms up. She's taken the shot, and I've blew my whistle before the ball has actually crossed the end, or the, the the end line, or, or crossed the bar. Because I'd counted, she'd got her shot off inside the five seconds, and I blew my whistle as advantage was over, and checked to see where that ball. If the ball had went over the bar after the shot. I knew I was keeping, it was going to be a score. And the fact that it's gone wide and I blew my whistle at her shot, I was able to come back. And I have to admit, there wasn't a complaint at that there stage because God, because with me counting it out aloud, I blew the whistle and I'd say, ball's gone wide, we're going back to the free. And everybody knew that just through that wee bit of communication. And I think if, 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 the boys and girls here, the, the referees here could incorporate it into their game. It, it is a big help, that counting, because it just lets the players know exactly where you are in your advantage. And, and Connor, just that's why I'm glad somebody brought that up about the five seconds. The, the whole play probably took longer than five seconds for the ball to go wide, but I had blew the whistle as the shot was taken so that I could see whether it was over the bar or wide. And what I like to see is, you know, you're letting the play develop. She gets her shot off. So you give them the opportunity to take her shot off. If it went over, it was a point. And it didn't go over. So he wasn't one bit afraid to bring it back and give them their free. And I'm sure that yeah. was well tapped over the bar from there. Yeah. Uh, Charlie McLachlan, I'm sure, would have been happening. But the other thing there, guys, is even though, just even in your head, even though the shot gets off, if it's inside them five seconds, if it's wide, saved, 
bring it back. That's the rule. Bring it back, CD. So, Brendan, there's just another wee one on that, so you might want to explain it. Should it be called before you see it, if it's a score or not? Um, I find it a bit confusing if you blow and then allow the score. But basically, so, once she's taken the shot on the advantage, I blew my whistle. So after she's kicked it, even if from open play, if she's kicked the ball and I feel it's a free and the ball goes over the bar, that score can be allowed. That's why once she's taken that shot, it's a bit like even like the hooter nearly. When the ball's kicked on on yeah. the hooter and the whistle goes, if the ball goes over the bar, the score is allowed. So it's it's in that case when she's taking the shot and I was coming down off my five seconds, I blew my whistle to show that no matter what happens here, I'm either going to allow that score or I'm bringing it back for the free. Now, will that happen in every game? No. It, it's amazing we actually find that clip there because that wouldn't happen very often that your shot and the advantage is going right on the button of the five seconds and that she's having a shot on goal. So would it happen a lot? Probably not. But it's just something maybe I have that I've, I've used once or twice in, in my years since the bandage has come in. So it has. And I mean, it works. It, and particularly for the forward team, because it is their original foul and you are trying to give them a chance to get that score. Yeah. And, and I think this is the last video in this section. So let me know what you think of this one. Again, I'll play it twice. What do we think here, folks? We're typing here, Claire. Yeah, Galway struggling to get out. Would have blown for free. Somebody says five seconds. Rub, good call. Brendan comes very quickly. Uh, correct call had options and kick. Good call, his time was over. I would ask the question to you now in this one. Was there an advantage? You could quite see that the, the Galway were being pressed when she was fouled. It was again quite clearly a foul. You know, was there an advantage in that point when that's in your own back line? Or is the best solution to blow the whistle and give that team the free? To let them work the ball out because you can see quite clearly that this developed straight into Mayo's hands again. And you know, Galway were fouled twice, they were fouled twice coming out of play there, and Mayo have the ball back again. And it was way back, sort of between the half back and the half forward line. And I would want every referee to think, is developing this play a really an advantage at this time? I would agree that it wasn't an advantage, that the referee should have blew the whistle when they were fouled and let the team, especially seeing how, how hungry Mayo were hunting them, give Galway the opportunity to take the free and play the ball instead of losing possession. And quite often, it's remarkable how many times we actually play the advantage in the team turn over the ball. I, I looked yeah. at hundreds of clips about 18 months ago on this when I was doing a, a seminar, and nearly 70% after we played an advantage and after the five seconds was up, the team actually turned over the ball. And that's why the whole idea of an advantage came into my mind to think, you know, we're a lot of the time we're just playing the advantage to play the advantage. And that's why the, one of the points to start was if it isn't clear. And to me that there was no clear advantage there, blow the whistle and give the free because we have to start blowing our freeze. It gives the referee an opportunity to tick the player if it's a non-technical foul, like a grab or a push. And it means we're not missing out on things like that. Yeah, there's a... Surely advantage should be a scoring opportunity most of the time. No real advantage when you're fouling your full-back game. 
And I have a few were saying the Galway girl had open ground and made a mistake with the kick. Yeah, and I, there's one, there's no way of knowing what would happen. That is true. Uh, what well, we've said that there from the from the very get-go. There's no definitive rule or, or when, you know, it's a very much an opinion thing. Am I playing advantage here or not? You know, sometimes it'd be like that, the, the me flip where just you play advantage, everything opens up, bang, it's in the back of the net. And unfortunately, you can get situations where you've played an advantage and the ball's turned over. It, you know, I just take a look and say, if you look at where all, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine. There's nearly 10 Galway players. And if you count the goalkeeper, there's maybe 10, 11 Galway players inside their own 45. I mean, it's, it's just so congested in there. And them situations, I'd nearly be saying, free but again it's a, it's a call for yourself but I'd be saying trying to it, particularly where the, the free was first yep. given I think my, my point as well on this would be not always to be playing the advantage when there's no yeah. clear advantage it's tr- and it, Brendan it goes back to the point you made you had a it had to be pointed out to you as a referee that you were playing yeah. advantage far too much far too much uh, it yeah. made you a better referee by knowing look I am and I am playing advantage far too much and I need to realise like when is it necessary to play it when it's not and it's a balance of between practice and decision making and you'll learn from an advantage you played in one game that you'll take it with you and go okay that was a really good situation to play that advantage and then there might be a time throughout a game where you played advantage and you realise you shouldn't off and when you go into your next game and the same situation might apply you might go okay I'm going to give the free this time we use I, our I think so too yeah, yes. and I think well, Claire too. I think one of the big things to me was in my assessments that were coming back to me, particularly in national league and championship games, the number of times that I was saying that I missed a booking for a persistent failing, and it would it used to get on my nerves that I would read. I've been told I'm missing the other cards, I'm missing the other cards, and I would go back and watch games, and I'd nearly say eight or nine times out of ten where I was missing. Noting offences is because it was playing too much advantage. Okay, I'm just going to skip on then. Decision making. Referees, and I think we covered it, has to make decisions regarding the advantage in the moment. So like everything, you're in the moment, you're reffing in the moment, you're making your decisions in the moment. The referee should use past experience and self-reflection to help them learn and develop this area. The referee must also consider the area of the pitch where the foul has taken place. If a team have a great free taker, a point scoring chance may be lost due to a team slowing down play and setting up an attack and going beyond the five seconds. Also, with time running out and a team chasing a game, they might benefit from more from the advantage if the opposition are fouling to slow play down. Referees can allow the player to shoot, and if she misses or the ball falls into the keeper's hand, the ball goes back to the original free. Brendan, I might let you pick up on the some of them points because I know there were some points that you were really keen to talk about regarding time running out and, and situation of maybe how a game is being played out and how you would play advantage then. Oh, folks, I think I lost them. Just talking, talking to myself there. Brendan must have lost connection. So when we were discussing this, um, Brendan was talking about that that situation now that might occur when, oh, there he is there. Brendan, I'm just saying, um, I don't know if you want to talk to them about, you know, when the pattern of a game changes. So if you're chasing a game and a team's constantly trying to foul you, you know, about playing advantage in them situations. Sorry, I, I was knocked out there. Sorry, I've just missed the last minute there, so I couldn't hear anything. So I've knocked myself out and come back in. Yeah, no problem. So we're just talking about the advantage, Brendan, in that situation of maybe sometimes a game's turned on his head that I che- you're, you're down by a point and you're chasing a game and the other team are trying to foul you, um, where you might then play the yeah. advantage. Yeah, that's not a thing to be thinking about. In... Very tight situations, last five minutes. I have found teams will, you know, in defending, will make those wee silly fouls to slow play down, slow play down. 
particularly if a team's two points down and you're looking at the clock or you have it in your watch and there's there's less than a minute left. I would nearly and I would be I'd be communicating this to them. Would be saying, I'd be calling I'd like, and to be giving out, you know, we are a violent yes. You're needing a goal. I'm trying to give you the advantage. You know, there will be time you have to blow the free, but I'd maybe be thinking more of letting letting play go rather than trying to have the attacking team getting the play rather than letting the defending team slow the play down all the time. I'd be nearly trying to give advantage when it is as much as possible to that team, particularly in the dying embers of a match. Um, this was a good one in for you, Brendan. I think I'll ask it now instead of waiting on to the end. Can the manager right. ask you not to give advantage? Do you know, do you know so it's funny you say that. Um, I was actually doing, it wasn't an LGFA game. I was doing a men's game. Uh, it involved, it involved Cross McLean. And basically, Ash McConville said that he, anything within 40 metres, we don't want advantage. And he, he absolutely came up and said, anything within 40 metres, just blow the free for us. And I, you know, in that case, it has been said, if a manager, no, I don't think, you know, personally, if you feel there's an advantage on for that team, you can play it. If it does material, you can take it back for that original free. I don't think a manager can come and tell you, we don't want advantage, blow the freeze for us. If you feel, let me tell you, the manager will be the first one to come pat you in the back when the ball's put in the back of the net or a great advantage. Um, if a manager came and said that, I'd maybe think about, right, okay, maybe I won't play as much advantage for them. But if I did feel there was an absolute clear advantage, I would give it and bring it back. But it may be more think about that team. Okay, the match, they, they, they don't really want to bet. They want their freeze for a free taker. I'd maybe think more about it during the game. But it definitely wouldn't make me not play advantage there. Yeah, I, th I think that's the, the important thing sort of probably to get across here. You're the referee. It's your decision. You, you shouldn't be being dictated to by by anyone. And um, it's not the referee. It's not the manager's or the player's decision whether you play that advantage or not. You're going on your own training, your own abilities, your own experience. And like that, you're trying to let the game open up. And if you want to play advantage, and as Brendan says, if it doesn't come off, you can take it back to the, the original Absolutely. thing. That's the, that's the beauty of the advantage rule that we have in our game, that if it doesn't pay off, you can bring it back. Um, so definitely, I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be going on a manager saying, you know, we don't want advantage. That's, that's not their call. It's, it's your call as a referee. Yeah. So noting cards while playing advantage, this, this, is, a, this is a big one. Um, I'm always rabbiting on about this. <laughs> Uh, I so I am in my in my own role. So if a referee plays advantage, but the foul was a notable offence, a notable offence in ladies football are our non-technical fouls. Then once advantage is over, the referee should still note the player. So just because the played advantage doesn't mean the player gets away scot free. Sometimes by playing the advantage, we forget the note. So as a referee, I would ask you to put a cue in your head that when you're playing advantage and it was a note, you're always thinking. I must go back a note. I must go back a note. That should be an instinct. So, so you're not missing the ticks because we all know three ticks is a, is a yellow card. If a player commits a yellow or red card offence, a referee can still play advantage. So they can still play the advantage and then return to give that player the red or yellow card. So what I mean by this is if somebody's burned down in goal and you're playing advantage and they're hit high, but they break through that tackle, you know, it doesn't, and you let play develop and, and they score the goal or it goes wide. As soon as that play is stopped, you're going over to that player that, that did the yellow or red card offence and you're booking and you're putting them off the pitch. Just because you continue to play advantage doesn't mean you can't go back and issue the card. It is important for a referee not to forget to note after playing the advantage. As a referee, try and have a trigger word or code word for yourself to remind you about this. This is really important. So many people forget to note the fouls, and there's so many uh, not there's so many yellow cards missed because of this because of the persistent fouling route. 
just because you're playing advantage, the foul shouldn't go unpunished. So just because you, the referee, are playing advantage, the foul still should not go unpunished. So just wanted to sort of get that thought process in there. So I have a wee question for you now. And again, if you just put in first or second, this is a wee scenario. Hopefully from a bit of your learning tonight, we'll get the right answer. A player is fouled and the referee deems there is a clear and obvious advantage and plays advantage. Then the player is fouled again before the five seconds has elapsed. If there is a clear and obvious advantage the second time around, the referee may play on. But if there isn't, okay, where is the free from the position of the first foul or the second foul? So we're just we're checking for understanding now, Brendan. Uh, so it looks like we're done well. They, we've done well. They're, they've been listening. They've been listening. A gold, a gold star for everyone. So the most advantage, so the second foul, and that's well, great. But I, I, that's I a great like, point by Rory there. If you want I, touch on that, Brendan. Uh, Rory, Rory Kennedy, and uh, yes, and we we actually Miss Hamilton spoke about this. If a player was foul in the process of, of kicking the ball and because of the foul, the ball went and bounced towards the sideline. And you've, you know, where the free is to be taken from where the ball's landed. If you've called advantage in that and the ball, the second foul is over there, I'd be taking it back, you know, where it's most advantageous. So it is. That's a good point there from Rory and um, is it Marta? Very good. Yeah. So a few take home messages before we take any Q&As for you. Um, and hopefully we've answered everything. But just to sort of wrap up for the evening. Only play the advantage if it's clear advantage to the team or person. Safer with the team in possession, keep in possession. So let's make sure they keep possession where possible. Don't be afraid to bring the advantage back if it doesn't work out. So don't be afraid to give the advantage a go if you feel something might happen. And if it doesn't, and that's my biggest thing, sometimes we feel like because we started playing advantage, we have to get let it go straight to five seconds. After two seconds, we'll realise it's the wrong decision. Blow the whistle and bring it back. Communicate the advantage clearly. Communication just helps us so much in, in clearing the lines for everybody. So let's communicate. Remember, the hand goes up. And I verbalize that you're playing the advantage because the player might be able to see your signal. And this is so important. Be confident in yourself as a referee. Self-reflect. So think about how you played advantage, what worked, what didn't work. Evaluate and work on it in your next game. Or possibly, and I don't have it wrote down there, talk to another ref. You know, that's really important to talk to people like-minded and, you know, run different scenarios off them different circumstances of them. And you'll learn so much by having someone like that you can turn to and speak to. But we're just hoping that hopefully you learned something from tonight. Um, you were great at interacting and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And we will take any questions if you have any, and um, you can throw it into myself and Brendan. But thanks very much everybody for attending. Um, it was super. But Brendan, I have one here. Uh, a foul is committed. And the stricken player may be injured. However, her team have a clear advantage. Without causing an interference, it would be possible for a referee to allow first aid onto the field to tend to the player. Given this scenario, can the referee allow the obvious advantage? Yes, I would say yes. That if a player's injured, if a player's down injured, and you've called advantage, I would be in the habit, take a look around. If they haven't got up, I would actually call or make a call uh, blue physio or something, you know, letting them know to come straight in and go off in your advantage. But as soon as the play breaks down or the advantage is over or when the next ball goes out to play, go back and check on the player. But absolutely, if it's a clear advantage and as long as the ball isn't in the around the area of the injured player, the ball's moved away from the injured player, absolutely. And if it's clear advantage, play on. And again, the thing about if it was a bad tackle, to go back and, and to administer any any punishment and cards or notings that are required. That's the only thing at the minute, Brendan. So hopefully it's been good and clear for everybody. It's, it's great to see. Um, great to have so many of these back online again. 
very good. Enjoyed the interaction there. Just read the incident where the player got shot. Uh, right, and you really put back. Do you get any grief for this? Do you, yeah, I, that's a good point. Do I get any grief regarding where I let it go and the shot was off? And the reason why I wouldn't get it, uh, much grief is because I'm counting. Yeah. My accountant keeps everybody. And if anybody goes to say to me, oh, the five seconds are up, and I say, I was at two, I was at one. You know what I mean? Um, when I blew my whistle, and particularly there, you explained to the girl, that one when the shot was in the air, uh, if anyone had said, oh, she had her shot, and I'd say, she had her shot inside the five seconds. If it doesn't go over, I go back for the free. If it's over, it's a point. So regardless of whatever, it's part of the advantage. It, it, it's your communication and explaining that. Uh, that situation doesn't, it, it's one of those where it'll crop up maybe once in a, a in a, in a season maybe just where that advantage finishes on a shot but um, uh, do I get much grief very little because I'm there and I'm counting and when they turn around and go oh you just turn around and say what I was only at two and they can't complain because they'll hear you count yeah and once they understand they're usually okay around it you know once people understand the rules sometimes it's just getting people to actually understand the rules sometimes that's more the frustration than anything um, well Brendan that's all we have in Thanks very much to Brendan Rice for taking his time tonight. And more importantly, thank all of you for joining in um, and interacting with us throughout. These webinars aren't the same without your input. So thank you all. Have a great evening. And we'll see you all shortly back on the pitch. Many thanks. Good luck.